Hello everyone. I want to show a game today played uh, in the Chess Olympiad of 2010 between uh, Litau uh, and uh, Caruana. Uh, it shows some very excellent opening preparation and uh, uh, some very sharp lines. Let's ch uh, let's ch check out the game. It starts with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight to f3, bishop to g7, g3, and d5. So we have the Fianchetto variation of the Grunfeld on the board. c into d5, knight into d5, bishop to g2, and knight goes to b6. Knight to c3, knight to c6, e3, and castles. Now white castles, rook to e8, rook to e1. All very standard development. Uh, black wants to play e5 here, but first, before an immediate e5, some gaining some space on the queen side with a5. Uh, queen to e2, which is the main line. Rook to e6, rook to d1, lining the queen, uh, the, the, the rook with the queen, and bishop c4, hitting the queen. Queen c2, and knight b4. Queen tucks back to b1, and now e5. It looks very, very strange. Why are we opening the d uh, d file when our queen is opposite the rook? But uh, it is uh, it's okay in this position uh, to do so. The move over here with known theory says b3, and if you look at b3, the idea behind is e into d4, and if b into c4, then d into c3. We give up the queen for the rook, and if it's knight to d4 just preventing rook d1 coming in, then rook into d4, we give up the rook again. And uh, after e into d4, we have rook e1 check. Bishop f1, and bishop takes d4. So white will actually have to fight here. Uh, to hold a draw. So there is known theory says that after queen b3 and c2 hitting the rook, so there is, uh, there's going to be, uh, in fact, the only uh, continuation is a3, just creating some room and hitting the knight on b4. Give up the rook, save the bishop with bishop h6, but then bishop g7. Uh, you can't capture on g7 because c1 will be a queen, so capture the knight and give up the bishop this way and queen into c2. So we give up the pawn and a into b4. c5 and knight d5. Black is okay here. Uh, uh, the passed b pawn will keep white occupied to some extent. The king is not very safe. Uh, the, the rook is active, the bishop is active. The knight is placed quite well. Um, this this uh, was known. If we just go back after e into d4, if white were to do e into d4 in this position, then you have bishop e6, just go back. And after bishop f4, let's say we have bishop f5 and hit the queen again. The queen is a little cramped in inside white's camp. So after, let's say, queen b2, moving away, we have knight d3. Uh, there is su sufficient play for black here. Queen d2 and knight into f4. It's okay for black here. Uh, but a, a new move was played here. Inst after e5, instead of going for b3, a3 was played. And this is a bit different now. Um, e into d4, which is the idea. A into b4. So, of course, if just before looking at the move, we don't want to capture this pawn. That's just not what white wants. Knight will simply come to d5. And if knight into d4 were played, then bishop d3. The queen is stuck, so you have to give up the rook. And after this trade, you have c5. And the knight is lost, so black will be up the exchange. So just grabbing the knight. And here comes the wonderful move, d into c3. We grab a knight back, but we offer up the queen for a rook. Um, 
rook into a uh, into d8 and rook into d8 the rooks are quite active here and to some extent white faltered here i think the best play here would be b to c3 it doesn't seem very logical at first but after rook d1 check and bishop f1 black only has a draw here so after bishop into f1 and queen c2 now hitting the rook black can only play bishop e2 and king g2 and bishop f1 draw that's the best black can hope for because black has given up too much material however after rook a into d8 queen c2 was played immediately this is a bit different first a into b4 uh, b3 is a, is a threat now now in this case if bishop a, b into c3 is played then b3 and after queen b2 d1 is quite strong there's a passed b pawn here already uh, uh, because now there will be no queen c2 to dislodge uh, the rook on d1 so after bishop f1 you will have bishop into f1 and the king will be trapped uh, bishop h3 checkmate ideas would be possible because the queen c cannot come to c2 to, th to threaten the rook on d1 anymore this is very different so after a into b4 knight into d2 knight d2 was played just to stop uh, the path of uh, the rook and just to give up some material to um, try to save the position but c into d2 simply uh, bishop into d2 and now rook a8 so switching to the other side uh, and the best probably is rook into 8 which was played no other alternative and after rook into 8 i think white became a bit too greedy may i think the thought here was to create some room for the king and bishop into b7 was played that maybe king g2 can come in after rook a1 check however h4 would have been a better way to provide uh, some breathing space for the king so h4 would have been a little better and h5 can be threatened at some point of time but after bishop into b7 rook a1 king g2 doesn't work here which probably was the original thought because if king g2 and bishop f1 the king is forced to go to f3 and now there is knight c4 knight is coming to e5 let's say bishop into b4 you have to play something knight e5 check and king f4 forced and rook c1 the rook can't be captured because knight d3 will pick up the queen the queen has to run on a4 and now rook c4 check e4 block and knight d3 and we'll pick up the bishop on b4 so after rook a1 check bishop c1 was played to block the the check but b3 now hitting the queen uh not much to be done queen d2 also is not very very uh, uh very very pleasant because queen d2 bishop e6 creating uh, some room on the c4 square for the knight to come in then bishop into b2 ideas will be possible and the pawn is quite strong on b3 but white played queen d1 immediately and that just allows bishop into b2 and that was the end of the game so a very nice victory for caruana uh, his opening preparation really paid off and i really like this game because it shows how powerful coordination amongst pieces is and it to an extent it reminds me of the game of the century in which bobby fisher showed us that a queen is not as powerful as you might think and in the face of coordinated pieces it can be quite weak um, so and, uh, uh, and that's why i find this game quite beautiful well thank you all for watching i'll see you soon for the next game